Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mic Check Podcast. I'm the host, T-Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. It helps us grow. It helps more people find this great content that we're putting down for you. So, flying solo today, and I want to talk about um, ESPN has named Trainer of the Year, and it's going to be Greg James out of Oak Cliff, Texas, Dallas, Texas, a.k.a. So, um, Derek James is a former boxer who has become a trainer of unified champion at welterweight division, Earl Spence, um, undisputed champion at the super welterweight division, a.k.a. 154, um, Jamel Charlo, and also up and coming prospect slash contender, fringe contender, um, Frank Martin, who recently had a bout on Saturday, December 17th. So I want to start this video by talking about the well-deserved honor that was given to Derrick James, a.k.a. DJ. Um, man, I got to be honest. I thought that he really deserved it in previous years. Um, but this year, he's definitely put a stamp on the game. Um, he's credited with only one loss this year. Uh, he was considered the head trainer for Marcus Brown, who faced uh, Arthur Bedvia for a unification bout, and he did not win. Other than that, and Derrick James had just joined the camp, so he wasn't necessarily – the true head trainer, he really didn't get a chance to put his stamp on the fighter himself. Other than that, and I believe that fight was like at the very end of 2021, but just just to be fair, we're going to say that's his one blemish for 2022. Um, otherwise, he won a fight in April with um, Earl Spence. He won a fight in June, um, excuse me, in May with Jamel Charlo, beating Brian Castaño in their second opportunity. Um, both those Fights ended up with his fighters picking up extra belt, and he's won at least two fights this year with Frank Martin, uh, a KO in the 10th round of Jackson Marinez, and then the most recent fight, he got a unanimous decision, just a complete route of Michelle Rivera. Now, one thing that's a staple of Derrick James, he's a very technical trainer. Uh, you'll notice in his fighters, they all have a knack for finding the spots. They pick their shots. They're not really super crazy combination punchers. They're very much the type of fighters that will kind of more of a pot shot type of thing, or they'll throw a punch or two to set up another punch. You know, they'll throw two jabs, set you up with something to the body, and they all do definitely use a body. Now, he he trains uh, his major fighters are, are two or southpaws. That's going to be Errol Spence and Frank Martin, and then he's got the orthodox fighter, Jimmy Charlo. Something that's also there for all of them, but two of them specifically, Martin and Charlo are very athletic guys. Uh, Errol Spence is not known for his athleticism, but he can get to where he needs to be. He can use angles when he needs to, but he hasn't really been pushed to use that in a fight. So it's not something a lot of fight fans have seen outside of training videos. Um, that being said, you can listen to trainer tracks when you watch them. They're Showtime guys. So you can listen to Derrick James when they're in the corner and just the microphone picks up what he's saying. He's telling guys very specific things. And then when they take the camera or the microphone, they go to the other track other fighters corner and you listen to their trainer sometimes they're very generic instructions or sometimes they're giving motivational tips you know hey just keep going don't give up whereas Derek James is saying hey when he drops his right hand shot to the body you know shot to the chin is there or set him up with this or he's giving very specific things that he's referring to the game plan that was laid out before the fight so you got to give Derek James his credit man um I view him as undefeated this year 4-0 um if you want to give the Brown lost to him. That's cool. So four and one, but that's still a pretty sensational record for a trainer. And that's in different weight divisions too. You know, you got a lightweight, a welterweight, a super welterweight, and then you go to a light heavyweight. That's still a pretty good record, especially with the fighters that he's had, he's been able to spend more time with. Um, his journey has been one that has come with some some hurdles. You know, um, Jamel Charlo lost a fight. Uh, he also had a draw, and they were able to work together and come back and win. Um, Errol Spence has had a lot of time out of the ring, may have a little bit more time. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and he's had to keep him focused and keep him in strategy and keep him on track to be the unified champ that he is. And I mean, Frank Martin was on a couple of cards that got canceled and they've had to reboot. Uh, they got a fight with Jackson Marina is on two weeks notice, um, switching opponents and they had to pivot do something. And then you get a guy completely style with Michelle Rivera. Um, so kudos to Derek James. Well deserved. Applause to you, but Bruh, um, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing. I'm looking forward to a great 2023 from that camp. I mean, that's the man down camp. Only. They, they got something good going over there. Um, so I'm looking 
for what it looks like for 2023, starting in January with um, Jamel Charlo, probably see Frank Martin back in the ring early in the year, first quarter, maybe March or April. So um, that'd be cool to see. Now, speaking of Frank Martin, um, his fight on Saturday night, I'm going to go ahead and throw the reaction in. I was going to do a separate video, but I just thought that it was just better to just go ahead and put everything together. Um, just to refer for a moment back to the coaching that Derrick James gives, it sounds like they really studied the film. They figured out exactly what Fair did well, what things he struggled with. They exploited his flaws and they avoided all of his strong points. And the thing that everybody talked about leading to the fight was um, Rivera's ability to have that that reach advantage and use his jab. And for whatever reason, Martin was able to nullify it very early. So I don't know if Rivera gave up on it really fast or if he just figured out Frank was going to get around it. Another thing you saw was the um, it was like a one one two with a pivot and then come with like a hook or something like that. I mean, Frank was walking into some really clean shots, and it was a really it was a beautiful thing to see when you watch boxing, not fighting like boxing. It's a really beautiful thing to see. And what I really enjoyed about what Frank was doing was he used his footwork to just out quickly. And then you could see the difference in hand speed. Like I thought Rivera has fast hands, but Frank Martin showed he was the faster fighter throughout. Um, his hands got there quicker. Uh, in the 50-50 situations, the handful that occurred, Frank was the first to get in and then exit the, the fire and then get off another shot on the way out. I really like that. Uh, he used his pivot game. And I mean, he just saw his turning Rivera, just turning him. I mean, the ref let him get away with a lot of stuff uh, where he would grab him by the hips, spin him, walk him into a two, uh, something to the body, you know, hit him to the head, go to the body. It was a lot of strategic moves, and this wasn't like combinations in your traditional sense. These were strategic shots. The the right hand set up the left versus it just being basically in rhythm. It was like planned shots, and it made a lot of sense for the way that Rivera just was unresponsive. And then you go to the corner, and that's something I mentioned earlier. You do the comparison. You've got Derrick James over here giving these very detailed, strategic moves. And, okay, we've set this up. Now we can come to this move. We set this up. Now we can come here. And you're hearing Rivera's corner saying, hey, keep your hands up. Defend yourself. But go out on your shield, and you need a knockout. What the hell is up with that? You know what I mean? So um, there are some concerns in this corner. I think they're going to need to go back to the drawing board. They'll review the film, and I trust that his camp will figure out what's needed and get him back on track. I mean, he's obviously not a shot fighter. They both took a step up. This was a dangerous fight at this point in their careers, and somebody had to win and somebody had to lose, and Frank Martin ended up the winner, and Rivera's going to have to go back and review things and figure out what's next for him. I think he's still in line to fight some other contenders and possibly get in line for a championship. This was a WBA eliminator. So there's a possibility he may have to fight a couple of fights before he gets back in the same position, but it'll be good experience for him. And everything that he learned against Frank Martin is just going to make him a better fighter. And I think this fight is also going to work for Frank Martin as well, because it'll be the confidence boost and the notoriety boost that he needs to get from the fights he wants. Uh, potential opponents might be Pitbull Cruz, um, maybe Shakur. Um, I want to dismiss the talk of Keyshawn Davis. Keyshawn's about seven fights in. I just don't think that that's a good look right now. Let that marinate for about two years. And in two years, go ahead and have those guys go at it. I think Keyshawn will get the fights he needs because top rank is going to keep him really active. In late 2024, he'll be at 10 or 11 fights. With the way PBC moves, Frank will be at maybe 20 fights in. So they'll both, they'll both be in a good place to kind of go head to head and really figure out who's the big boss and the next generation of uh, lightweight contenders and then maybe start to talk about Titan. Um, Frank did mention Tank. Um, Tank is one of my favorite fighters. Frank is also one of my favorite fighters in the same same division, on the same side of the street, so to speak. Um, they both rock it with Showtime. So, man, that will be fireworks. But as of right now, the way that Tank moves and that, that, that equalizer, I got Tank in that one, but I wouldn't count Frank out. I think he'll give him a good fight, especially if he cleans up some defensive errors that he did make against Marinez and against Rivera. Um, moving on to Errol Spence, also a stable mate um, of his. Um, I feel like he kind of let everybody know that whatever reports came out about his injury from the car accident where the 14-year-old kid uh, ran through a light and, and, and hit him head on, um, I'm glad everybody's okay for one. You know, nobody had any major, major injuries, but I do believe Errol Spence had a more serious injury than reported. Um, 
he initially was going to announce a fight probably that was going to occur sometime in February. Probably was going to announce it on the after, you know, the after interview of Frank's card or during the little the little halftime interview they did with Brian Custer. But instead, he let everybody know he's probably going to be looking to get back in the ring. Initially, he said May or June, and then he kind of circled back and said April. Um, I'm going to lean to the middle and say it's probably maybe he might be dealing with some type of tear or something like that. Uh, this is purely speculation. Don't go and quote me. But it's potentially that maybe he had a little bit more damage than he's willing to let on because he doesn't want to give anybody any ammunition for something that could possibly be attacked. Um, but one thing I also want to dismiss is that this dude didn't go out there and get injured on purpose to avoid Terrence Crawford. So let's let's kill the bullshit on that. But I do want to say that I, I think it's time for him to start taking Ubers to get a driver because I'm a little concerned about Earl Spencer and Monroe being on the wheel. You have way too many um, fender vendors and situations out there. So be safe, bro. Um, hopefully we'll see you in the ring sooner than later. Um, if he's looking at an April date, April, May, June, that actually aligns with what Terrence Crawford was talking about which is April or May. So maybe he's trying to just wait it out and he's going to take advantage of the recovery time that the sanctioning bodies are going to allow because he did have a major accident. I mean, that vehicle's total. It was bullet, it's bulletproof, all metal, and the front was completely smashed. So that's a high-impact crash. There's got to be some lingering injuries, and he did have a little bit of a limp. Um, he did talk to um, Ellie Sekback um, on ES News, and he gave a little bit more insight about his concerns about the fight with Terrence Crawford. And the main thing he was upset about is that Terrence did not give them notice that he was negotiating with someone else and that he probably was going to go and pick up a quick bag and then head on to something else. But that being said, hey, prayers up for you, EJ, man. Get well soon. Get back in the ring. Looking forward to seeing you. Um, I'm ready to go ahead and drop that $90 for your next pay-per-view because I would love to see you go in there and get the opportunity and undisputed and hopefully become the first welterweight undisputed champion of the Fort Bill era. Um, last guy on the stable. This is kind of a Derrick James overview. Um, last guy on the stable, Jamel Charlo, is going to fight um, Tim Zoo. Um, I got Jamel, and I got him by stoppage around the eighth. And I just think that Zoo makes a lot of mistakes that are going to leave some openings for Charlo to take care of really early. Um, I think his footwork is going to be too much because Zoo um, is a kind of come forward kind of guy, and I don't see a lot of finesse in it and I think that finesse, quickness and that slickness is going to look a lot like when people are going to roast me for this but I'm just going to say it. think about when Canelo and Floyd Mayweather fought how it felt like Canelo was just always a step ahead I feel like Charlo's going to always be a step ahead that ring savvy that experience and then just his ability to use his feet to get around him um, it's a close stance fight and though Zoo has power. I just don't see him getting the shots off that he needs and really being able to sit down on the shots because as he loads up and swings, Charlo's gone and he's hitting him with something nasty. And I think that, you know, some hooks, that that left, that lead hook is going to be a problem for Zoo. Um, he's not always the most officially responsible. And um, I just, I favor Charlo. It's going to take him a while to get there. He's going to have to break some down a little bit. But after we see uh, Terrell Gaucher knock Zoo down because of a mistake. I can see Charlo taking advantage of that a couple of times. He might have to put him down a couple of times before it finishes him, but I do see him winning the fight. So overall, I'm looking for a really great 2023 from Derrick James's camp. Um, you know, it sounds like he's not looking to take on many more fighters, so he's going to keep it small where he could get that individualized focus, and he could potentially have three or maybe even four champions at one time if you know, everybody stays healthy and physically able to perform at the highest level for a couple of years to come. He could have four champions at one time. That would just be amazing. So I just wanted to give him his flowers, you know what I mean, give him his credit. So this has been the Mike Check Podcast. I am T-Word, the People's Champ. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate all the support. You can hit that cash app and donate. Help the channel grow if you like. But if not, just share it with a friend, and that's more than enough for me. Until the next time, peace.